Hey guys, Jonas here with 52 Things and today we're gonna talk about motion tracking. Man, I've really missed you guys. I've been stuck editing for several months now, a process that I find both fun but also sometimes ridiculously frustrating. But there's also a time when we can get really creative with the footage that we have and I find motion track tracking being a really powerful, awesome tool that we can use to spice up the edit and something that pretty much all of us can use. For example, as scientists, it's a really great way to emphasize a point or a detail in the footage. Or we can use it to add really cool techie effects like turning something up or turning it down. Or like an Iron Man with all his heads up displays and his suits, really awesome kind of stuff. I particularly like to add motion tracking when it comes to adding text in the videos. I find that it gives a really cool kind of feel to have the digital uh, text look like it's kind of glued to something in real life. And there's several ways we can do this. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways you can do motion tracking in Adobe After Effects, which integrates really well with Adobe Premiere, of course. The cost is only gonna be the cost of the program, of course. Uh, in After Effects is, is a little bit of a pricey program, but if you have Adobe Premiere, chances are you're also gonna have After Effects if you have the whole Adobe package. Uh, Time-wise though, uh, simple motion track, I would would say it takes about 15 minutes or so to do which is not a whole lot but if you're not familiar with this technique I would give yourself a couple of hours to, to actually you know to learn how to do this and figure out the technique uh, and there's ways to get super fancy with this stuff as well which obviously takes a lot more time all right we're going to make this simple here's a clip from the rainforest it is a close-up of a leaf and I'm doing a slow slide past it I'm going to attach text to the top of it kind of like we saw in the beginning First, we need to open the motion tracking workspace up here. We see the new tools appear down here in the corner. We have four different main categories to choose from, and we're only going to work with these two, track motion and track camera. And for this segment, we will just track motion. When I click track motion, two squares appear in the middle of the screen with the text track point one. This is what we use to pick a point to track. And down here in the tools, we see the box position checked. And next to it, we have rotation and scale, but unchecked. These give us a few different tracking options. If we only have movement in mainly one plane, then position is enough. But if we have a camera that is moving in and out and rotates, kind of get closer to an object and then back again, then we also add tracking of rotation and scale. If these boxes are checked, then two track points appear. We need to use two points for the program to analyze how two points move in relationship to each other sort of thing. But for simplicity, for this particular clip, I'm just gonna do one track point. Um, and so we're gonna uncheck the rotation and scale. The next thing we need to do is create a target for our track points or track keyframes. We go up to layer and choose a new null layer. This is like a nothing layer that works as a reference for other layers to link to. Then we go down here to edit target and make sure our null layer is the target for our motion track. Okay, so one more thing before we are ready to start the process. Go down to options here. I'm not going to worry about all of these different options except for the one right down here at the bottom. It allows me to decide what I want the program to do if the confidence level is below 80%. Basically, as the footage is analyzed by the program and it has some difficulties figuring out if it's tracking the right spot, I like to set this to stop tracking. Then I get a chance to review the tracking right away instead of having to go through it afterwards, which is what you would have to do if it's set to continue tracking. And this is just my personal preference. Now it is time to pick a tracking point and it needs to have pretty good contrast differences for the program to keep track of it. The outer square we see is the search region After Effects uses to search and the inner square is what's called the feature area which is the element in the layer that should be tracked. The cross right in the center is the anchor point to which our added object will be connected and I generally like to keep the cross right in the center. You can move it but I usually don't. Now what to track. So I often choose something small and it doesn't have to be exactly where you want your object or text to go. As long as it's close around the same area and around the same plane, it should be fine. 
For this clip, I think I'm gonna go bigger and choose the entire hole in the leaf like this. When we have it adjusted to something like this, we make sure we start at the beginning of the clip. So just move the little cursor here all the way to the beginning. And then we can go to our tools again and hit the little play button to analyze forward. Let it run. And if it gets to a point that it isn't sure about, it will stop and we can double check it. And just double check, it is still tracking the right thing. So there we go, looks good. And when it's done, it's gone all the way to the other end. We have to go ahead and apply it to the null layer. So we go down and hit apply. And that basically attaches all of the keyframes to the null layer. And click OK on both the X and Y dimensions. And then we can go ahead and create a new text layer. And I'm going with Expedition Rainforest here. I line it up where I want it to be at the beginning of the shot. For this one, I'm also going to check the 3D box down here so I can manipulate uh, the layer in three dimensions. And when I'm done with my adjustments, I go here and I link it or parent it to the null layer, which is easy. So basically, the text is moving with the keyframes that are attached or linked to the null layer. So I'm just going to do one last thing before I'm done. I'm actually going to duplicate the text and make uh, the one underneath into a shadow of the text. So all I do here uh, has nothing really to do with the tracking. It just makes it look a little bit more realistic. Uh, all I do is I play with the rotation to make it look like it's flat on the leaf. And then I'm going to apply the hue saturation filter and drop the lightness all the way uh, to make it black instead of white. And I'm going to add the preset or filter Gaussian Blur uh, and increase the blurring quite a lot. Uh, but I'm going to drop the opacity of the text and make it look like a shadow. Just make sure this dupl duplicated layer is also linked to the null layer. And there you have it. Now you can export it to a new clip or if you're sending the clip to After Effects through Adobe Premiere, which you can do, then it will automatically appear in your Premiere timeline. Perfect, nice. And then we have the second option in After Effects called Track Camera, where you basically attach an object to a position in a three-dimensional space. If the camera is moving in or out or sideways, it was basically attached the object to a uh, position in that three-dimensional environment. This is a really cool tool. Uh, but it does take a little bit of extra time for the for the computer to process. Let's take a look at how it works. I have opened a clip of a dock with boats and with the clip selected, I then go back to our motion tracking tools and click track camera this time. The program starts to analyze the footage, which will take some time. You can follow the progress up here in the clip effects. Uh, let's speed this up. This is going to take more than three minutes, I think. All right, we're getting close and when it's done, solving camera appears and then a whole cloud of little crosses appear on the clip. These are points that the program have found it can use to track. The closer they are to where the camera is, the bigger they are. We can now use them to link an object or text in a three dimensional space. I must say, though, that there could be a lot of trial and error to figure this out. A lot of these dots actually don't work so well. They have been selected by the program, but could still give us a messed up track. For example, if we have a lot of moving objects like people or moving boats in the, in the shot, that can really mess this up. I'm going to select one of these in the back here. I right click and since I want to add text, I'm going to choose create text and camera. For the point that I choose here, I end up with a, a text layer that lies almost flat on top of the boats, but this could be different depending on what point you choose. And as you can see down here, we also end up with a 3D camera layer. So instead of uh, being linked to a null layer like we, like we had in the previous example, the text na layer now is by default a 3D layer. I'm not going to go into camera movements and stuff in this tutorial, and I don't really have to either. There's a whole science behind these. All we need to know is that the text layer should now hopefully stay in the same spot on the dock of the original clip as the drone in this case flies past the boats. I can rotate the text layer in the 3D space to position it however I want. 
And I'm going to rotate it around its x-axis so it looks like it's kind of standing up on the dock. I want to point out something though that is a little bit difficult to explain. It looks like the text is right there, but one thing that took me a while to figure out in the beginning was this. We are dealing with a 3D space, which means that it is really hard to say exactly where the different layers are in relation to each other unless we look at the scene from a different angle. If we go down here and change from one view to four view, uh, views, you will hopefully understand what I'm talking about. Here is looking at it from the side. See how our new text layer is way far in the back. The reason why I show you this is that I have had multiple times where I couldn't figure out why some layers were not moving at all the way I thought they were going to. They were just simply in a completely different place than I thought in the 3D space. So what you might have to do then is manually move them into position. And I find it helpful to do that with the four different angles up like this. Okay, enough of that. Let's see what this does if we go back and proceed with the tracking. You see how the text is kind of stuck to the boat? Just the way I wanted it. Now we just have to change the words and the positioning to where we want it to be. And I'm also going to line it up so it looks like we're kind of flying through the O. There we go. And done. All right, guys, I hope this video helps some of you guys. I want to take this opportunity to thank our Patreons for supporting us. Uh, you guys rock, and without your support, we wouldn't be able to do this. And remember that your support is also helping us create science and nature videos to uh, you know, help protect wild places and biodiversity. So thanks for all of your support, and stay tuned for the video coming out next Tuesday. All right, thanks for watching.